yeah, things evolve. A, a world that I'm going to pinch from Fabian is, of course, visas are usually political tools. So, so depending on politics and, and time, given time, things change. Um, we're privy to probably five full relocations per week here at French Connections these days. So that's usually couples moving from all over the world. And so we, you know, we're, we're at the forefront of, of this. Um, so yeah, we, we get an awful lot of feedback. I personally ask all of my clients to give me a debrief of what happened uh, on the days of their, their appointment. So I, I'm, I hope that I can bring to you guys um, a lot of positive stuff as well today because there's an awful lot of fear mongering and, and unknown. So I hope that I can give this for you guys today thinking about moving to France, which is such a wonderful country. Um, and, and definitely, you know, the aim eventually for me and Fabian is not just giving you a, a taste of what we do, but also, you know, encourage you to do so. So the major changes to jump into things are mainly to the fact of some rules are being you know, uh, tightened up. The volume of requests is higher than ever for fir for the first time ever. US um, people are moving in bigger numbers than people from the UK. And um, so that's, you know, um, hence why our, our opening of a US office is also to cater for the different time zones. But I have a particular connection with the USA and, and it's, you know, it's, it's always been a, a very close place to my heart um, and to a lot of people in my team. So, yeah, we, we essentially um, today have seen a big change and shift with new countries opening up for visa um, uh, um, application processes as well because COVID is suddenly kind of really um, uh, been something that's 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 been re not resolved I've got to be careful there but yeah that definitely now all all visa centers are pretty much open um, and for those that do know it, don't know it, um, not many of your applications will actually be held at the French embassy because of the volume of applications. The French government have chosen to subcontract um, these applications, so they filter them for them and then submit them to the consulates in whichever country you're you're living in. Um, because of these volumes, there are um, and because of these companies getting better at what they do as well over the course of time. Um, especially for the UK, right? And there's lots of more options that are available. You can pay for fast tracks. You can pay for all sorts of things. But essentially, the rules have been tightened up. I think this is fair to say. Um, and yeah, the, the two companies uh, that really rule that those 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 um, applications have different ways of dealing with things, and they're all, as you mentioned in the disclaimer, done on an individual basis. But more to the point. We've seen for EU spouse visas, um, a, a different, so I know there's a lot of questions about EU spouse, a lot of Irish people suddenly emerged during Brexit. Um, so yeah, the, there's been a lot of change around EU spouse. There's a lot of opportunity around investment visas, potentially on those that want to open GITs and run GITs in France. Remote working, we've had an awful lot of success with remote working um, applications and we understand, I think we probably understand better than anyone today, um, the exact specifications of what that means because we've been subject to an awful lot of tough ones, trust me, over the last few months. Um, and as Fabian does in his company, we provide a uh, delivered goods or money back guarantee on all of our services. So I pride myself and I make sure that um, we do the absolute best to get that positive outcome. Um, so it's really important for us as a company to always understand and be at the cutting edge of this. And the way that we do it is quite simply communicating with people that are doing it in the real world. Um, and yeah, we've very successfully, so I think today I got a huge thumbs up. I think we had 15 visa validations from the, the UK and five from the USA uh, today. Okay. So they've all come in through before the end of the year, um, but delays are longer as well. So that's another thing, delays of how long your passport's been held because of the volume of applicants is getting slightly longer um, all over the world. And just on that bit of info before I forget to share this with you guys, depending on the way you choose your center, it will always go back to the embassy in one specific place. So for instance, in the USA, you could be sitting your appointment in LA or San Francisco, New York, 
your your passport is going to travel back to DC where the consulate are going to validate it. So there's going to be a delay just on postage. Um, same for for people in the UK. Um, if you apply in Manchester, well, your, tr- your passport's going to have to travel back to London and then travel back to you. So there's there, there are further delays. So it is important does to London. That, that. Um, does that mean that potentially somebody who had the option to travel to London might be able to speed up their application? Um, a bit? Yes, but that depends how busy London is. Um, and so, yeah, you, we, we've had, uh, I would say on average at the moment, we've gone from about two weeks maximum to get hold of your passport after your appointment in the UK to about the same delay as for the US, three to four weeks. So that's pretty much it. Um, certain countries like Switzerland or um, China, for instance, you've got to apply directly to the embassy for, in certain cases. So that could actually be quicker. Um, there are options um, if you're doing this on your own, when you're booking through the companies that provide these services or bookings, there are options to fast track. In my experience, I'm not sure that they actually do much because you'll see they, they give a 30 day maximum turnaround, which is pretty much what it would be anyway. So, um, yeah, be careful of, of the fact that, you know, I don't think there's much that we can do to speed up French admin. So plenty of preparation is key for all you guys watching. So just to confirm that, if that they take your passport at the, so you make the application initially online, and then that's at the interview where you go in to the visa center where they take your passport. Is that correct? Sure. And that it's a month from then that you would just- Yeah, yeah, expect to get your passport kind of back. Process, that would be the month that you- could, And then you've got a three month period to go to France and validate your visa. So you've okay. got a whole process of booking, going to the appointment, waiting for your passport, traveling to France and validating your visa. With our services, we look after everything for the client, but the client does usually typically have to go to an appointment uh, at one of these centers. Although since we last spoke, as I mentioned, I think as a bit of a scoop uh, beforehand, there is an online platform that is available in certain cases, but it takes a lot longer at this stage. So it's not actually speeding things up right now, but the, the, the theory is in certain countries, we will be able to have these online applications that would actually make it easier for those that don't want to have their passport held. They can actually just go to the center to get the stamp. So th- there's, there's a whole workaround of uh, all of these processes, as you can imagine, that have become more and more popular. I think it's fair to say also, uh, Zoe, that the the US market, the Canadian market, um, and the UK market, which are the most English speakers of course, come in France, um, there's probably a lot more flexibility since COVID. So a lot of our clients, actually Fabio will be testimony to this, a lot of our clients are a lot younger than they used to be, even potentially from the last time we had this, this, this video um, webinar, um, which means the policies are, are different for medical terms. But from our side, it's a lot more remote working or business visa orientated. Um, so, so that's changed also, that's changed the dynamics, but there's another thing that I see a lot of comments coming on about um, the, the, the lax rules for second homeowners, which is something that's new. I mean, bear in mind that this is gonna take a long time to get out. There's, there's some information that I think you can, you can uh, readily access through our, our newsletter or uh, on our webpage, but that's also part of these changes you know so the the the, the visa centers are busier they're looking at solutions to reduce the amount of people in there and to speed the processes up clearly and to reduce the cost i guess for the french government as well yeah so this um if people don't know what we're talking about there is this well you can probably explain it better than me richard but there is Mm. a bit of talk at the moment about this potential visa uh for for british second homeowners if i have understood it correctly um but yeah it's it's not a done deal it's not just british people the good news is my my beloved usa is 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 always already also concerned actually in this reform um but fabio who's far more involved in french political uh, terms than myself would be able to explain that this is not necessarily this is the first stage and it's far from being you know awarded or accorded so what we've done in our newsletter is put the most amount of information that we could have that's clear for everyone. There's potentially good news at the end of it, but it's still 
most probably for most of your viewers today that are considering permanently relocating not really make much of a difference um but it would it would make sense that that france embraces you know people that are going to go and boost the economy um in 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 that terms and make it easier i think the the denotation here is there's a special relationship with with britain but potentially a special relationship with america right so this is where it probably will become quite a long tiresome process so if you're planning on applying for a visa you're still going to need to apply for a visa right now guys and the good news is we we pretty much know it like the back of our hand um fabian has all the right policies for the applications so we can get you to france pretty quick <laughs>